Good afternoon, class. Welcome all of you to the new session, two thousand twenty twenty one. We begin the first chapter of our geography class today. That is part one. It is about human geography, its scope and content. The second book, the part two book, also deals with the same topic. The only difference is this is a general study about the world, and the specific instances from India has been discussed in Part B, Chapter One. Today, I'll be teaching you from Part One, Chapter One, and tomorrow I'll draw the corresponding examples from Chapter One, Part Two, that is Indian geography. The study of geography. has two distinct branches physical geography and human geography what you studied last year was physical geography this year it's all about human geography what is human geography what is the scope and the content of human geography human geography is understanding the whole world and the process that affected it it focuses on the built environment and how space is created viewed used and managed by human as well as the influence of humans on space that they have occupied human geography focuses on activities of the human beings human beings are pivotal in the study of human geography it is an interdisciplinary science because it is related to economic geography political geography social geography historical geography population geography and cultural geography anthropological geography is also an important branch of human geography I'll now discuss a line about each of these branches of geography. I'll start with anthropological geography. Anthropological geography discusses about the spatial distribution of various ethnic groups. Which ethnic group, for instance, where are the Negritos from? Where are the Proto Mongoloids from? Where are the subsets of the Proto Mongoloid population distributed in various parts of the world? So that comes under the ambit of anthropo geography. Cultural geography is how humans have built up the space. The study of macropolis, the study of acropolis, the study of eukaryomorphopolis come under its study. What are the different shapes of the human settlement that comes under the study of cultural geography? Economic geography deals about the distribution of resources, their utilization, development of transport and trade. That is economic geography. Political geography deals about the development of the city state, and this is very closely related to historical geography. How has history developed with reference to geography? Which geographical roots, which geographical belts were developed in the historical past? That is the ambit. That is the scope of the study of historical geography. What is population geography? Population geography is also said to be demographic geography. Demographic geography studies about the various aspects of population, growth rate of population, stages in the growth rate of population, percentages of literacy in the country, gen gender distribution, occupational structure, sex structure. We will study all these in details in the subsequent chapters. So that is about population geography or demographic geography. social geography deals about the various interrelationship that exists between the different regions between the various ethnic and the other cultural groups now why is geography said to be an interdisciplinary science geography is said to be an interdisciplinary science because it studies about universe and the various elements over it and the various elements are indirectly are directly interdependent upon space and time 
and when it is dependent upon space and time it covers under its ambit climate vegetation settlement population and various aspects therefore geography is said to be an interdisciplinary interdependent science now if you refer to the assignment that has been given first question is what i have covered today in this lecture